Hey what is up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Gran Turismo 7. It's that time of the week once again when the weekly challenges go ahead and refresh. Overall this week is relatively short with the best reward possible on offer, of course I'm talking about that free 6 star car roulette ticket reward. In terms of completion time, if you are doing it the legitimate way, staying within recommendations, you're probably looking at 40 to 45 minutes tops. However, you can probably do this as quick as around about 30 minutes. So let's head into an overview for November week 5. This will end on the 5th of the 12th, 2024 at midnight. As you can see for the events this week, we have Lake Maggiore on the centre layout for the Sunday Cup, one of the starter events for Gran Turismo 7. Then we move over to the Japanese four-wheel drive challenge 600 at Trial Mountain Circuit. Then we head over to one of the new update 1.54 events, that is the Porsche Cup at Laguna Seca. We have the returning special event for the Mazda Roadster NA with a one make, of course for both the touring car and road going variant. That is over at Fuji Speedway this time. And then to finish off, we have the WTC 800 at Daytona Road Course. In terms of the rewards on offer this week for completing one event, you will bag yourself a six-star roulette ticket parts ticket. For completing three events, it's a credit ticket of 150,000 credits. And for completing all five of the events, it's a six-star roulette ticket car ticket. Of course, the most sought after of all the rewards in-game. As you can probably tell, a lot of these events are very short and sweet, and there is some very easy easy ways to just cheese it overall and get it done even faster so you really shouldn't have any problems this week but let's get into it then with event number one of this week which is of course the Sunday Cup at Lake Maggiore Center layout of course this is one of the beginner events to Gran Turismo 7 and since there is no PP limit and it's pretty much open to any car in game you can just go ahead and blast this one out in around about a minute tops if you really want to as always though I will run the events on the hardest difficulty and with a car as close to any PP recommendation as possible, hence for event 1 why I ran the Skyline 2000 GTR. So as for the event itself, it is super short and sweet, it's a two lap sprint around the centre layout of the Lake Maggiore, which is one of the game's shortest tracks. Now because this is essentially an introduction event to GT7, it is littered with some of the slowest cars in the game. Things such as the Toyota Prius, the Toyota Aqua, really they're not going to give you any trouble. And whilst there is a couple of cars in there that can be a little bit quicker, such as this Mazda Attenza there, as you can see, the majority of the time they will just get stuck up in the pack and you'll be way past them before they can even cause you any trouble. Overall, you shouldn't be having any problems getting this one done and dusted. As you can see, coming towards the end of lap one, we managed to take the lead. And at that point, it's all about just keeping our nose clean and building up that lead and getting this event done and dusted. You're looking at around about just over a minute a lap in these cars. It really isn't going to take you any time at all. So there we go. That is event number one done and dusted. Tick number one of the week. Of course, the payout is extremely low at 7,500 credits with that clean race bonus. Only 2.7 miles travelled. But of course, we're also going to get awarded with the parts ticket on top of that. And that is going to be it for the Sunday Cup event. So let's move swiftly over to event number two of the week. Of course, this is the Japanese four-wheel drive challenge 600 at Trial Mountain Circuit. Again, a two-lap sprint, but this time in a bit of quicker machinery. Now, in terms of the cars themselves, you are looking at four-wheel drive Japanese cars around about 600 pp. However, the majority of them are much less than that. So again, you shouldn't have many issues. I went for the GTR T-Spec without any upgrades straight out the dealership, sitting at around about 590 pp for this one. And just like the last GTR we used, we did manage to win the event pretty easily. So on to the event itself. It's a two-lap sprint around Trial Mountain, one of my personal favourite tracks in the game. There are 10 cars in total, 9 AI cars of course. Now in terms of that AI, this is where it gets extremely frustrating. Whilst it does recommend a 600pp car, that is more than enough to get the job done. The majority of the cars, especially the back runners, I cannot imagine running anything more than around about 450 to 500 pp, meaning that they are just rolling chicanes for the entirety of the event. Even if you approach a car that seemingly has aero changes, more than likely that is it for that car. It doesn't have any proper performance upgrades, and again, it's more like they're on a Sunday drive.
five than actually in the middle of a race. It really is a shame, and overall you should be able to wipe the floor with these cars. Now there's only realistically one car that could give you a bit of an issue, and that is the typical 22B Impreza, which always in these events seems to be way off in front and just disappearing into the distance. However, as long as you've got a car around 600 pp, you should be able to track it down, get it overtaken, and get the job done. As you can see at the end of lap one is when we took the lead, and we built up around about eight and a half seconds by the time we come across the line. Just like the first event of the week, this one is super simple and easy. Now in terms of the payout for this one, it's going to be a little bit better, but not by much. 30,000 credits with that clean race bonus with seven miles driven. So let's move into event number three then. This is one of the new events to the game for update 1.54, the Porsche Cup at Laguna Seca. Of course, aimed at Porsche cars, around about 650 PP or less. I hope one day PD up the PP limit for this one so that some of the faster Porsches can run without a major nerf. However, one of the Porsches that will do this no problem at all is the 911 GT3 RS, which was my car of choice for this event. So let's go ahead and get this one done. Now it's a bit of a bigger grid this time around. There are 16 cars in total, of course 15 AI over a five lap sprint race. Now since we're at Laguna Seca, this is a track that is incredibly tight at times and can get really, really chaotic. Now in terms of the you know spread of the grid, you do want to be picking them off one by one, of course, if you're going for that clean race bonus, which I do recommend you do. And just because of the way that Laguna Seca is laid out, you really want to be making sure that you're picking them off at the right time. Every now and again, you may run into a group of cars, but they shouldn't give you too much issue at all. The best place to get them if they're in a grouping is on one of the straight sections, either running up the hill or on the main straight here like you see in. Now, one thing you're probably going to notice is the spread amongst the field here. A lot of the cars are nowhere near that 650 pp limit, meaning that it does create huge gaps amongst the field. Now, you'll probably notice that even once you start getting towards the front, that you've still got plenty of seconds to chop away to just get towards the leader. Now, every single time I've run this event, it's been the new 911 Turbo S. That car is incredibly quick in comparison to the rest of the field, so it may take you an extra couple of laps to eventually get it overtaken. As you can see, I did mine on lap 4. Going up the hill, we've opened up the DRS, the four-wheel drive, allowing the Turbo S to pull away. But we do manage to put it around the outside with that incredible era we have. Opening the DRS again, and away we go. So just be aware that the front runner is much quicker than anything else on the grid. So after five laps, we're going to get this event done and dusted. And that is going to be tick number three of the week. And of course, that does mean we get a new reward on top of that. It's 120,000 credits with the clean race bonus, so it's paying out not too bad at all this time around. 11.4 miles done and 150k for completing free events. Let's move swiftly then into event number four. Unfortunately, it is one of the weaker special events. As you can see, this is event four, the special event for the Roadster NA1 make. And because of the way that Polyphony has set this up, it is incredibly awkward to get that balance correct. However, I feel like I did eventually find that balance running a road veering of the Mazda Roadster NA. I found a build of 190 brake horsepower to be pretty much the sweet spot to have an enjoyable race overall. And that's where I'm going to kind of complain about this event. As you can see, it's a five lap sprint with 10 cars in total, which just doesn't seem enough for a track this big and makes the event very, very boring if you just so happen to work your way through the field inside seconds and disappear off into the distance. Now, honestly, in terms of the spread, Polyphony's got it pretty right here. All cars are within around about eight seconds of each other, meaning that it's going to be incredibly tight and twisty and you're going to be constantly in and out of cars trying to battle away with them. That's why I do recommend going for something sensible and not too overpowered. You'll find the event much more enjoyable that way. As you can see, I'm just picking them off one by one, constantly going through the grooves, battling it out and just trying my best to get through the field without hitting them. At least this way we are getting some competition, we're having some good on-track battles and we're making the most of a relatively lacklustre event. This will probably be the final time we'll see it as well as it has been entered three times now, which is usually the cutoff point for a special event. Now in terms of the rest of the race, as you can see, most of the lead group was kind of bundled together and it was all about just trying to pick them off one by one. And that would lead to one of my most exciting on-track battles I've had with AI in a very long time. 
myself and the other roadster, the road going veering up here, had a great little slipstream battle, battling in and out, trying to get overtakes done through the corners. It was just absolutely fantastic. Again, just showing that if you do kind of get that car performance right, you can have a relatively good time here. So we tried to get it down the inside, but unfortunately the rear just got away from us and that would allow the car to go back into the lead, but it wouldn't be for long as we would manage to pick him off on the outside, up the kerb, and then getting ourselves set up for the inside of this sweeping right-hander here. That gave us a lead nice and easy, and we would go on to get a lead of just over four seconds in the end. So that is the event done and dusted, tick number four of the week. The payout is pretty decent for this one, so for around about 10 minutes you're looking at 180,000 credits with that clean race bonus i really cannot complain about the payout just unfortunately the event's not too great and we also get our daily four star as well so let's move into the final and biggest event of the week that is the wtc 800 at daytona road course again thanks to the whole pp rating system this is easily cheesable if you do want to go down that route and you can get this done in absolutely no time it's certainly not the longest race but we do have tires and fuel enabled my car of choice for this one would be the Ford GT from 2018. It absolutely did the job fine and it does keep me in line with the rest of the AI just with a turbo strap to it. Now in terms of the event itself I do recommend running fuel mix 6 and then boxing in and doing another fuel mix 6. My choice of compound tyre would be the racing mediums. This way we're getting enough fuel and tyre life to get us to the midpoint, box in and then just beat the rest of the AI as the majority of them will actually pit twice during this event, meaning that you can quite easily just move through the field without having to do that much on track overtaking. If you do want to go the route that I'm taking, which is of course a group 3 car in game, I recommend strapping some sort of turbocharger to it. Of course we're losing a lot of performance through the corners, running fuel mix 6 and just saving our fuel and tyres however you can then make that up on the straights meaning this is where you're going to be picking off the majority of the AI they are extremely slow in a straight line in comparison especially if you have that turbocharger installed so as you can see for the majority of the early stages of the event we were just picking them off one by one and group by group just slowly working our way through the field without taking too many risks or spinning out or kind of absolutely shredding the tires or drinking too much fuel now you will find that the lead cars will pit anywhere from the end of lap four to the end of lap five now we are going to go for the end of lap five method this way we are pitting later than the majority of the field as you can see we're already up to p2 by the time we go into the pits and we're then going to rinse and repeat our strategy so we're going to go for a fresh set of racing mediums as these are good until the end of the race and of course we're going to fill the car to full then when we leave the pits we're going to rinse and repeat the fuel strategy so it's going to be fuel mix six for the majority of it however since we should have some left over in the tank we can boot it up to fuel mix one for at least the final lap or so and get ourselves to the finish line as quick as possible so as you can see on go the tires in goes the fuel it may take a little bit of time it does seem that the fuel uh, refuel rate here is pretty low um, especially compared to some other events so you may feel like you're losing a lot of positions but don't worry too much as you can see by the time we come out of the pits we're actually going to end up in around about p10 which is slap bang in the middle of the grid and with quite a big gap to the lead cars by over 20 seconds however a lot of those lead cars will still have to pit once again meaning that we can just make that time up whilst they're putting tires and fuel in a little bit later so as you can see we do have that huge gap to the front runners there but don't panic too much you will be able to make that up once they pit now in terms of the other cars once again we're just going to pick them off on the main straights and as i mentioned get the jump on them when they have to pit once again so the leaders have gone in we are going to then overtake them and that moves us up into p2 with a lap remaining now of course since we did save some fuel we're going to boot it up to fuel mix one and make very little work of the wrx in front of us getting in the slip pulling out and giving ourselves a nice easy lead now at this point in the race i am actually going to keep the car at fuel mix one but unfortunately i kind of just overdid it a little bit meaning we had to actually go across the line with no fuel in the car thankfully we did have enough of a lead by around about three seconds so we did manage to just crawl across and take a win there so there we go that is going to be tick number five of the week the last event done and dusted
Now, in terms of the payout for this one, it's 231,000 credits with that clean race bonus over a 35 mile distance. And of course, we do get the free car ticket reward. So let's open up our rewards for this week. First, we're going to begin with our daily driving marathon. This was a four star. Typically, we do get some pretty terrible rewards off this one. But this time around, we're actually going to get an engine swap, which is going to be the Suzuki uh, Group 3 engine, one of the kind of bike sport engines in game, which is a decent engine swap overall so i cannot complain at that we're then going to move on to the parts ticket of course this is for completing one single event this week now again this can give you some very very terrible rewards there's no other way of putting it and it's usually for a car that you're really not bothered about so in terms of my reward here as you can see it's going to land at the bottom open up and it's going to be the bought up s for the bac mono 2016 i feel like i have about 500 of these parts for that car by now but either way it's not a bad car then of course we have 150k credits to add to the account for completing free events and of course finally for completing all five is going to be the free car ticket reward now this can award you with things such as le mans racers group three race cars vgts typically the more expensive cars in the game and we are going to get probably the best reward of the bunch here this is of course the audi r18 from 2016 a group one race car with a pp rating of 882 so there we go. That is this week's weekly challenges done and dusted. It's a relatively short and easy week this week with some of the best rewards possible on offer. Let me know what you think of them down below. Huge thank you to my channel members on screen now. If you do want to join it, it's massively appreciated. I hope you have a fantastic start to your weekend. I'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Peace.